Hey guys, talking with Nate. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I wanted to just take a few minutes and share my testimony. Uh, my testimony of my life and how I found um, Jesus Christ and how I accepted him uh, as my personal Lord and Savior. And, um, and go from there. And welcome to uh, Black History Month. Hopefully that you do celebrate Black History Month and that you will look um, <clears throat> look back on those who have went before you um, to allow us to be to be able to have freedom in America. And um, and with that being said, I want to just um, start off with you know just my testimony. Um, you know, just the beginning of my life. I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, uh, before I, I finish, I want to remind you, make sure that you are, um, sharing these, these videos and that you are, sh um, um, just, you know, sharing, uh, my page and make sure that other people are subscribing to them, to the, um, channel. So just share the channel when you get a chance. Uh, but back to what I was saying, um, I was raised in a Christian home all of my life, um, raised with Christian parents that, um, I believe that really love God and has always loved God never was perfect um, but that really feared God in the best way that they knew how at that time and even today and um, so I was raised in a Christian home but I was a child that was very rebellious my biggest issue in my life was rebellion very stubborn Wanted to, think, wanted to do things the way I wanted to do them. And um, man, I tell you, I have learned a lot of lessons that you cannot, when you're really called and chosen by God, you cannot do what you want to do. <laughs> your plan would never work. Only the plan of God will work in your life. And when you detour from the will of God for your life, it causes issues, it causes problems. And so um, I just want to encourage you uh, to make sure that you are not uh, uh, functioning in the spirit of rebellion. The spirit of rebellion um, is literally, is really, what it really is, is disobedience. It's really going against authority or going against the will of God or going against those things that are right for you to do. But you're choosing to do the opposite of what is right because you want to do what you want to do and how you want to do it. But what I'm saying is that your plan, your will for your life will never work. Only the plan of God will work for your life. That is the only thing that will work and that you will be able to succeed in. And if you think that you're doing your own thing and you believe that you are succeeding in that thing and it looks like that you are succeeding, I want to remind you right now and let you know, give you a little bit of knowledge on this issue that later on down the line, sooner or later, your plan will be destroyed. Point blank, period. Your plan will be destroyed. You must learn to fulfill and to do and to know the will of God for your life. And to make sure that you are honoring all authority, delegated authority that God has put and ordained and designed in your life. That is the way to succeed in life. Not saying that you're going to be perfect because you will not be perfect. I wasn't perfect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but, um, but I was a very rebellious child. Wouldn't listen. I got whoopings all the time. My mama didn't play. My dad didn't play. Uh, my dad was more so of the merciful one than my mom. My mom was more so of the disciplinary of the household. And so, um, man, I tell you, I, when I say I got whoopings almost pretty much every day, Knocked up, knocked up, crossed the head and just, man, I, I, I would get whoopings all the time. And, um, you know, my mom did the best she know how to do ah, with me. And so I can't say that it did pay off because today I am a child of God that knows God, that has encountered God. I have no more religion. I have no more churchiness, you know, being, um, in, in other words, just being religious and just being super spiritual and all these other kind of things. And stuff. But I really know God for myself. 
and um, and it has and those whoopings, those prayers that my mother, and my father, and my family has sent up, it has worked, you know. And so I'm serving God with all of my heart, my soul, and strength. And um, I'm I, I I believe that I am fulfilling the will of God for my life now. I have I I have detoured over time, but I have gotten. I have gotten back on track and I have learned how to get back on track by the things which I have suffered that God has taken me through or to, oh yes, that, that God has taken me through to learn and to know um, who he is and that he's not a God that he um, that 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 you can play with or that you should be playing with. God is not nothing to play with. Trust me, if you plan with God, if you're going to play with God, I'm telling you that you have something you have something coming. God is not nothing to be played with. He's a God that we all must fear all the days of our lives and to fulfill what he desires for our lives. And so let me move on because I really don't want to be long. I want to um, share with you um, just a few scriptures. Um, Proverbs 22 verse 6 and then I get into the rest of my testimony. So let's go to if you have your Bibles. If you don't, that's fine. But Proverbs 22 um, talks about a child and how he is raised. Proverbs 22 verse 6 it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old or when he is mature, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. So in other words, and I do have a three-year-old child. He turned three Sunday. I do have a three-year-old boy, baby boy. Um, the Bible says that to, the Bible says to train up a child in the way that he should go. That means to teach my son in the way or in the direction that he should go. That is talking about um, raising my son up in the ways of God, not just to know the acts of God or how God functions, but to teach my son Caleb about the uh, about the ways of God the characteristics of who God is his ways you know his 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 characteristics um, um ah how can I explain it the different personalities of who God is his nature the love of God and all these different aspects of of who God is how my son should be living his life how my son should be functioning in God in Christ Jesus. So the Bible tells me to train your child up in the way that he should go. And that is the way of God. That, excuse me. And that is the way of God. Not Caleb's way. Not uh, um, Nathaniel's way. His father's way for his life. But to lead Caleb and to train him. That means to help him. Uh, that means to develop him. To develop Caleb in the foot, excuse me, and uh, to fulfill the will of God for Caleb's life. That's what this scripture says, and that's what my parents has done in my life. They have done the best they know how to do to lead Nathaniel Coley Jr. in the ways of God to fulfill God's purpose in my life. The Bible says, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I will always know, even though we make mistakes and we get off sometimes, but I will always know in my conscience, in my heart, on, on, on what route I should be in, or on, excuse me, on what route I should be on. And that is the route of, call, uh, that is the route of the will of God for my life. And that's my, and that my friends is what the Lord, uh, excuse me, is what uh, my parents has done. Even though my parents divorced, uh, I believe they got a divorce when I was eight years old and separated. Uh, but uh, but and that did affect me in a lot of ways because a lot of different things that I went through and that I experienced um, was things that was unnecessary. If my father would have been there in the household, there were certain many, excuse me, many things that I didn't have to experience or go through. If my father would have stayed in the home and my parents would have worked it out. You understand? 
And so uh, and even the spirit of rebellion, uh, the, the spirit of rebellion flows and, and, and functions in a lot of young people because the, the home is absent of fathers. It is fathers that puts things in uh, uh, in 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 uh, uh, in order. It is fathers that brings correction and control to the child's life. It is the father. Watch this. It is the father uh, that uh, that that leads and guides and shows the child or the children in the direction that they should be going in. The mother can only do so much. And, and it's sad to say that a lot of mothers today, a lot of single mothers today, they have to, uh, they have to uh, 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 do the father's job. And that's not fair to them. And so the child grows up in a way being dysfunctional because of, excuse me, because the father is absent and the mother has to play both, pro, both parts. That's not fair. The woman cannot teach the man how to be a man or cannot teach the young boy or the of a male figure how to be a man only a father knows how to do that and that's why it's so important for single single mothers to um to uh, uh, uh to lead their children in the ways of God because the because they the the, the child can look to God as a father and God still can bring them up and, and into the way that God would have them to be. Number one. Number two, uh, uh, the, 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 the mother, the single mother uh, should do her best to um, look for father figures or masculine men to help train her, train her, her children up to help, you know. To give them the other aspect of what they need. Because God originally designed the home to have a father and a mother. So that the children can grow up balanced. When one parent is absent, the children grows up unbalanced. And I didn't mean to get up, get up you know, get on, on here and preach. I really did not mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. But anyways, let me move on. So, you know, my parents got a divorce. Divorce divorced and um it did affect me in many ways in, internally uh, in a lot of different ways educational wise um just in a lot of ways and a, a lot of different things and mistakes that i made in life like having a baby out of, out of wedlock you know a lot of it comes on sim simply because my father wasn't in the home because if he, if he was there then a lot of different things he would have not allowed if he was going to be a real father and a real man you know, a lot of different things that he was supposed to teach me that he didn't teach me. And my father still is in my life today, but he was still not in the home. We have to fight against fatherlessness. And vice versa, if your situation was is the other way around, then hey, that way too as well. But mostly we see that it's fathers that are absent, then mothers being absent. Majority of the time, mothers, mothers are always there. You know, and so, um, you know... I, I, you know, and I got saved at age 12. Um, I got saved at age 12 in 2000, I think, yeah, in 2008. And I got filled up with the Holy Spirit um, that summer of 2008. I believe I got saved around in the month of March. And then I got, then I got filled with the Holy Spirit in the month of June, I believe. I think it was June 25th, 2008. I got filled up with the power of the Holy Spirit of, of in it, and also speaking in other tongues. And so, um, uh, you know, this is my testimony, but God has delivered and set me free by the power of God from the spirit of rebellion and from all these other unclean spirit, spirits that are out there. But the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of laziness was my two main biggest issues in my life. Being lazy, don't want to go to school, don't want to do this, don't want to, uh, you know, study and, you know, just do my do my job as a as a student, as a child. And it has took me years to be restored and to get back into the place where God will have me to be for me to be successful academically, spiritually, financially and health wise as well. Trust me, don't make unnecessary mistakes because it takes years to um, to be restored from those things that you have done. Um, I was going to share some other scriptures. Um, I was going to share um, about how uh, 
how the Bible talks about that. We may we must repent. We must repent and be forgiven of our be forgiven of our sins and give our life to Christ. Um, that's first John. First John chapter one, verse nine. And I'll put it in the in the description below. You guys can look at the um look at the description and I'll put some things in some notes and comments in there that you guys can go to and look at some scriptures on your own. And I was gonna also put a scripture, uh, I was gonna read a scripture about tongues, about how um they were in the upper room. The disciples and some other um, believers was in the upper room waiting on the on the wind or, or, or waiting on the Holy Ghost to come because Jesus had promised him that when he left, that he was sending another comforter for them, for their for their for their earthly success and for their spiritual success. And, and that was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And so I was going to read that, how, how God filled me up with the power of God to be able to live the life that God has called me to live. And so that would be in Acts chapter 2, verse 3 through 4. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit came like a, like a mighty rushing wind and they all begin to speak in other tongues. It's a heavenly language. You see that? And so um, the next phase of my life, um, as I begin to finish high school, and I always had a problem with education. I always struggled, in, you know, and in, in, in when it came to academics, you know, because I really never had a heart for school and my parents really didn't push me academically like that. So I always struggled academically. And so, um, but my point is after high school, um, I had a baby out of wedlock. The preacher, the man of God fell greatly. I had a baby out of wetlock and it was my worst year of high school. My last year, my senior high school, my senior year was the worst year of my life. Had a baby out. Well, I struggled that year academically. Um, I was struggling with the ACT, the SAT, the FCAT. I didn't pass none of that. I would be like one point away, two points away, three points away, one point away again and all that. It was just terrible. And then, um, and I kind of like got off focus spiritually anyways. And so, um, I, and that year I began to fornicate and get into things that I didn't have no business getting into. And, um, you know, and I ended up having a baby out of wetlock that year, right after we, um, graduated, I ended up having a baby out of wetlock and it, it was, it was terrible. The year, the first year too was just chaotic. And even today is, is just, it, you know, it's getting better. And so the Lord is doing a lot of restoration and just doing a lot of different changes. And I thank God for that. Um, but my point is, um, because I sinned against God, I got outside of the will of God. Um, I got outside of the will of, of the Father. Um, things just went wrong. My life was very dysfunctional. You understand? And so uh, I encourage you to stay in the will of God. If you don't know the will of God for your life, seek him. And you shall find him. Knock and the door shall be open. You understand? Ask God. Uh, ask him, what is your will for my life? And his first, in the por first portion of his will starts with you getting into the word of God. Start reading the Bible. Know what belongs to you. And what God has for you and what God is saying to you uh, um, in his word. And, um, and spend time in prayer, spend time communicating with the Father and, and go from there. Um, and so, yeah, I had a baby out of wedlock. You know, the Bible talks about um, not fornicating. Don't be a fornicator because there are consequences that follows after that. God has to judge sin. And in all of that, he does, of course, shows mercy as well. Um, but don't willfully sin against God. And so I encourage you guys, don't get caught up in all these different things. I'm telling you, it takes years to catch up and get restored and get where you need to be in life. And I was going to read a scripture about fornication. Um, that would be 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. And now, um, the good things now of my life, of where I am today, dealing with my testimony, is that I am now in college now. Um, I am a, uh, I am a freshman. I'm just starting school. Like I said, I made mistakes. So it has taken me years to, to, you know, to get back where I'm supposed to be in life and what I should be doing and what I believe the Lord has called me to do and, and you know, to do and to, and to fulfill. And, um, I am a college student now. 
I like it. It's going pretty well. Um, I'm having some challenges, but um, I believe through the grace of God and through the help of the Holy Spirit um, that I'm able to succeed academically. And so the last thing is uh, I am serving God totally, totally. I am serving God totally with all of my heart, mind, soul and strength. There is nothing that can detour me from God, even by going through the things that I have went through because of my disobedience and my rebellion and my fornication and having a baby out of wetlock and making mistakes and unnecessary mistakes, doing my own will, my own plan, my own destiny, my own purpose, having my own personal goals and all these other kind of stuff that I want to do. Uh, that I want to do, all these different things have caused me to draw closer to God. I learned most of my lessons the, the hard way. I'm encouraging you not to learn the hard way, but, de but just, just submit and yield to God's will for your life. And I promise you that you, uh, you will come out more successful than you think. It will save you stress, time, money, all that. Just, I mean, I'm telling you, you will walk in so much peace by doing the will of God for your life. God's will and plan is always better. I'm going to say it again. God's will is all, God's will and plan is always better. When you do your own plan, I promise you, you will not succeed. That is the word of the Lord. You will not succeed if you're going to do your own plan. Later on down the line, sooner or later, you will fail. But I encourage you this, this, this evening to fulfill the will of God for your life. And I wanted to read one more scripture and I'm not going to read it. Well, I guess I will read it. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Let me read it very quickly. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. I love this scripture. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. You must love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. Love him with every fiber of your being. And I promise you, you will prosper. You will succeed in every area of life. In Jesus' mighty name, I speak that over your life. I declare that over your life and over my life in the name of Jesus. That if you love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that you will succeed and not fail. Because there is no failure in God. Even though we make mistakes, there is no failure in God. He'll lift, up, he'll, he'll lift us back up where we need to be in him. And so I, I encourage you tonight, I encourage you to make sure uh, that you are fulfilling God's will for your life. You are honoring authority. You are in the word of God. You are declaring the word of God. You are fulfilling the word of God. You are in prayer. And that's all I can, I can, I can tell you. And so that's my testimony that God has took and taken me from rebellion, from laziness to energy and obedience. And I'm grateful for that. And I see the Lord moving in my life. And so he will move in yours as well. Well, God bless you all. I will see you guys on the next video. I love you. Make sure that you remember to make that you remember to uh, 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 to be obedient and to love God with all of your heart, soul and mind. God bless you all.